Welcome to Sculpture Studios, joining us for one of our 2018 Christmas projects. So, while Aidan's on Ho Ho Holiday for three weeks, lucky for some, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We're going to be uh, holding up the fort, and uh, what are we making again? Uh, we're going to be making a Christmas sack with loads of presents on top. Loads of presents. How big? Uh, say two minutes wide by uh, 2.5. 2.5. We're made from poly, covered in fiberglass, rendered to look lovely. Um, we we'll put some music on, not festive, because it's September. What do you want? Disney? Yeah. What do you want? Moana. 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 Put some Moana Obviously, for copyright purposes, we're not going to play Moana for the video, but we're enjoying it in the workshop while we get down our 8 by 4 by 2 foot blocks of polystyrene. Good thing about this is, we've got loads of pre-cut, off-cuts from previous jobs. All these can be used for different presents. All going to be glued together with a kind of a resin bonding mix once they're uh, all fire blast. And then they can be artworked and then individually added to the job so it looks like the concept image. You got the concept image? Yeah, Look at that! Even got this baby one, which from the. Whoa! So, we're going to be creating this Santa sack with presents bursting from the top for a Christmas parade in Wales. As well as being able to be used this year, if stored nice and safely, the fibreglass will ensure this is strong and durable enough to use for many more Christmases to come. This is our PU expanding foam, probably the messiest material in the workshop. You get it on your clothes, some old stuff, it won't come off. Don't get it on your clothes, don't eat it, don't put it on your eye. After a very comprehensive, common sense tutorial on expanding foam, the blocks are adhered together. The foam takes around half an hour to 45 minutes to set properly, and then it can be trimmed off using a knife if any excess is sticking out. The trick with this foam gun is to not have it open too much. Held in place by metal dogs while the foam sets, the main blocks of the sculpture are fixed together. We've drawn out rough peripheral shapes on the flat surfaces that we're going to use a hot wire to take off, and we've allowed ourselves a bit of extra material to carve down from later. With only a rough concept from the client and a general look of what they're after, we have a bit of freedom with this job, but we're going to try and get it as close as possible without needing to make any drastic changes. We said there wasn't going to be anything festive in here, because it is September, but September's the time kind of last minute really, that you need to start getting your Christmas projects in. Okay, so we're going to hold off as long as possible, but there might be a little bit of Christmas music creeping in later. In the meantime, the square cubisness of the shape is honed down so that we're close to that round bag feel. We often get a lot of requests for information about the tools and materials we use, some of which are strictly top secret of course, some of which aren't really a secret at all. The handheld hot wire here for example is formed using a variable transformer that allows you to raise and lower the power depending on the speed you want to cut and the length of your chrome nickel wire. We'd highly recommend a proper electrician create this for you if you're having one made. Not that our health and safety talks haven't been completely top notch up to now, but that's a very solid point. Best to have a professional create something like this for you. So Jess is currently on the hot wiring, and uh, while she's working around the front of the shape, I'm going to start carving nail brushes, which is literally a bit of wood. Shape of the handle with nails hammered all the way through, and then you work down to wire brushes. And this is all handmade, um, so in the time that you would have something modelled on the computer, programmed in, then 3D cut, and then sent to you, however long that would take, we've carved it. And here, 
We also make it snow for free. It's beginning to look a fuck crisper. Yeah, no matter what the job is or how long we've got. We always pull it out the bag. Pull it out of the bag. Oh, oh we just grace to be in your presence, Jess. As long as I don't get the sack. As long as you don't get the sack. Oh! These puns. What's that? These puns. <laughs> These puns. Here we've cut off the top section of the bag, now the majority is carved, and we're removing a circle from the center. This is a quick and easy way of creating a nice flat surface at a perfectly even depth across the entire opening, and this saves having to get up there and dig loads of polystyrene out by hand. And I bet you didn't even notice that Liam and I didn't use any tools to cut that out, did you see that? So how was your holiday, Aidan? Uh, my holiday was very, very nice. Went to Canada, Rocky Mountaineer trip, that was good, and uh, saw the icebergs and the glacier, so Vancouver. Very, very, very Christmassy, good. snowy scene. Any gifts you brought us back? Um, you're going to have to see tonight when you come around for tea. Oh, come around for tea. Yeah, very nice. For now, back to work. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be taking out the whole middle section of polystyrene. Not only does this save on material, but it also keeps the weight down for the total job so that it's more manageable for us to lift it onto the lorry here at our end and for any manoeuvrability at the other end. The top of the block is going to form a, effectively a shelf because obviously the whole thing isn't actually going to be full up of presents although that would be lovely but this will go back on now that we're happy with all the carving and this will be adhered to the surface once again. We try to utilise any offcuts and spare material, like the bits and pieces from a previous job that you saw earlier that are now going to be used as presents, and likewise there'll no doubt be a project in the future that this column will be perfect for. Look at him! Can't help himself! First aid back! He's supposed to be recovering from jet lag. Can't help it. Now that all the presents have been phoned in place, and we're happy with the overall look of the sculpture, we're going over the entire form with our sticky back tinfoil. Remember how I mentioned about secret tools and materials? Well, here we are. The little Christmas elves just left rolls of this for us overnight. It's even a secret to us where this comes from. Anyway, the foil provides a protective barrier between the polystyrene and the resin that's going on top. We need to make sure that every inch is covered so there are no holes and no breaches. And an alternative to using the foil is a PVA glue. This would need to be built up in multiple layers, and obviously we're approaching winter, so drying times would be increased, so the best option for us is our foil. However, PVA glue in multiple layers would be suitable coverage too. If you've seen our other videos, you'd know that we specialise in mould making as well, but for this project, only one is going to be created, so a mould for multiple casts isn't necessary, and as this is going to be seen from an audience by the roadside distance, the finish doesn't need to be a car body finish as such, so a mould for a hyper smooth end result isn't needed either. This will also be really difficult to create a mould for, with all the presents piled up the way they are, so we're going over with a blanket coat of glass fibre and working up the surface afterwards. This is essentially tailoring the project for what's needed, to save on any overkill and any unnecessary extra cost for the client. And I told you Christmas music might sneak in. Oh, I don't think those elephants are going to fit inside those presents, Aiden. If a little kid's asked for one of those. That's true. So what's going on here? Well, 
with fiberglass to all, which gives it a lovely tough shell. Now we're trying to lose the, um, the matte look, the texture of the fiberglass. So we're going over with a flow coat and this just floods it all out and we can sand it back tomorrow until we get the desired finish we're after. Should look really, really good. With the polystyrene kept inside, the fiberglass doesn't need to be super thick as the poly helps retain the strength. And, uh, and this resin over the top, this will give it a tiny bit more strength, but the main thing is just to lose that, that woven look. And we can go over with more flow coats and, and, uh, and different mixes of fillers as well um, until we get it as smooth as we like it. Hey, I was going to say that. Oh yeah? Yeah, back off man. <laughs> So now we know it all fits, it's now going to be taken outside, all the presents re-sanded, possibly refilled, depending on the finish, and eventually they're all going to be coloured with their bows and ribbons put on top. I mean, we're lightening this up considerably with a bit of music, but sanding back, refilling and sanding back again and again is a real drag sometimes, but it needs to be done to achieve a decent finish, and the laborious tasks are all part of the job. Luckily for you guys though, we can glorify this and skip bits, and keep the spirits nice and high as they should be. Yeah, go on lads, there we go, just makes everything better doesn't it? Bit more Christmas music thrown in. Here we are with the second present so far. We've now just had a nice coil of synthetic rope, 50 millimeter thick, just delivered, which is going to be perfect for this size. Aid's just marking out the front so we know where the rope's going to wrap around, coil into a little knot and then hang down. We'll probably fray the end so it tassels out a little bit like the, uh, like the concept doing the client sent us. Compare it to that concept image, Aiden. Two knots, one at the top, one at the bottom. See how the synthetic rope frays on its own, and if it's not something that we're happy with, then we'll sculpt something and fix it to the job so that it looks more look like the concept image. This is now going to be covered or impregnated with resin so it holds on to the job so that anyone pulling on it won't be able to move it. Kieran's just going round hot glue in it to tack it in place for the moment even though it's quite quite a solid rope stand in place anyway but we make sure it stays in the position we want it and once the resin cures this will be nice and strong it won't move certainly won't be able to undo the knot Here we're using a fiberglass ribbon for the ribbons themselves and we're going over with a resin once we're happy with their placement on the job Far enough from the edge, didn't you? Just zoom in, don't you? <laughs> I can't. Zoom in right in on your face. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's horrible. Once the surface is suitably smooth, we go over with a primer layer for the artwork, and we usually use a grey as it's easier to see any imperfections if something needs a bit of extra work. Some presents. What are we using on here then, Kieran? We're using a selection of um, 1K paints. Got a little colour swatch that going on so we can see what colour paints we're going to be using. Got some nice Christmas reds, nice uh, nice dark Christmas trees. And we're using a selection of colours just to uh, give it a bit of variety. Ooh, very good. Yeah, all Christmassy colours. What are they blocking them all out? Very nice. 
Online, we've ordered vinyl transfer stickers to create some nice spots for some of the presents, and the rest is pretty much painted by hand. Once the paints are dry, everything will be covered in a lacquer just to seal the artwork properly. The 1K paints also mean that this can be touched up if anything were to get damaged later down the line, even in a couple of years' time, by which everything can always be repainted if needs be. So we hear the rope's all been resined, it's all been painted, and this tassel is basically the rope all uncoiled to make this bit decorative on the end. And here all the presents are finished. It's time to install it on top, possibly for the final time. Whether or not we're going to fix this down or not will all depend on the transport. It can only go on one way, so the presents naturally dip at the front. So it favours the front view. And all the bows that Kieran's been spraying up hey, are going to be installed on top of the presents. Just to stay in keeping with the concept artwork, patches are being airbrushed on. This is being masked up, so all the lines are nice and crisp and neat, and Jess just loves doing a bit of airbrushing, so she needs her fix. Oh, this one's not a patch on that one, Jess. Hey! Here we are, have some metal brackets welded up. Basically, there's a point on here. They're going to go on the underside of the... Um... Look at her laughing. Get out of here. <laughs> here we are, have some metal brackets I made up, flat mild steel. Have a point on the top side there, and they're going to be poked up underneath the, the sack there. <laughs> <laughs> going to be sticking out the side up here on four points so they can screw it and fix it down to the bed of the truck. Um, should be secure enough and we're going to laminate underneath here anyway so it'll be really strong. It's so. been red oxide just so the metal works protected yeah. from being outside in the elements as it's going to be on the back of the float and now we're going to get this bag aloft. With the brackets installed underneath, all the artwork complete and everything ready to go, it's time to send a few images to the client. This is the first time they've seen the sculpture since the polystyrene stage, where they first confirmed the master pattern before we started fiberglassing, so it's a nice surprise to see the end result. Some clients that we work with like to be in the loop every step of the way, and they end up overseeing every process. Others like to leave it with us, and trust that we'll create something great for them as a reveal at the end, and that's exactly what's happened here. We'd like to thank Caroline Davies from Swansea Council and Paul Lee from Eureka Wales for approaching us with the project and we hope the sculpture serves its purpose and serves Santa for many Christmases to come. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.